Today I'm going to take you on a little tour of the truck and show you the mods we made in anticipation of a lot of traveling in the trip to Alaska. Solar power and lithium ion batteries are a huge part of our setup, but that's an entire video on its own. In fact, that's our video two weeks from now. Today I'm going to take you on a tour of what modifications we've made to it, why we made these modifications, and what modifications we have planned for the future. Next week, I'll take you on a tour of the RV so you can see where we live and how we live and work, and what upgrades we've made to it. Our truck is a 2017 Ram 3500 Cummins 6.7 liter diesel engine with a 4.1 axle ratio. Our curb weight is 8,167 pounds. Our GVWR is 14,000 pounds and a payload of 5,830 pounds. We have a towing capacity of 21,660 pounds and the total combined weight rating for the GCWR between the truck, cargo, and trailer is 30,300 pounds. Now, if you're not familiar with the weight ratings and towing and stuff, so this sounds confusing, don't worry about it. When you set out to get a trailer and truck, you'll learn pretty quickly as we did. And while there are plenty of videos on YouTube explaining this seemingly complicated topic, if you'd like me to make a video visually explaining this topic, just let me know in the comments. Okay, back to the truck. The truck came with a spray and bed liner and no cap, but it was a really rough bed liner and we needed a smooth slidey surface to slide belongings in and out of the truck bed with ease. We also needed extra storage space in the back that was dry and in a relatively controlled storage environment. So we sent the truck to a local shop in Columbus to have a Lear liner and truck cap installed. We chose this particular cap because of the privacy of the sides and the ease of getting to items that were farther back. Things that, say, were strategically stored along the sides for easy access. This has come in really handy, not only for privacy and access, but for opening both doors on hot days for ventilation, as well as keeping a more stable temperature inside the truck cap in the absence of windows that magnify the sun's heat. The cap liner is a felt liner that really helps keep down heat and ambient temperatures and keeps the temperature inside the cap pretty stable. Part of this installation included LED lighting inside the truck cap that is controlled both in the back as well as a master control switch under the headlight switches in the cab. This lighting has been amazing because we seem to often find ourselves working in the night when time and opportunities to work are short. On the opposite side of lighting, we tinted the driver and front passenger's windows to the darkest legal tint allowed for the front side windows. We did this because it's like wearing sunglasses for your whole body with the windows tinted and with lupus, I'm super sensitive to the sun. Tinting the windows has made driving extremely comfortable for me and if I'm not in pain, I'm able to focus on my driving. So when we got the truck, the whole point of purchasing this particular truck was that it would be able to tow any RV we decided to buy. We had our eye on the RV we bought, but the truck really had to be purchased first to make sure we could tow whatever RV we did end up buying. We bought the horse first. Cart horse, bought the horse first. But this horse had a rough ride. A super, super rough ride. It was so rough that after the test drive, my lungs hurt. And they hurt for days. Lungs hurting isn't an atypical thing for me. It kind of comes with the territory of lupus and fibromyalgia. But to get sore lungs every time I ride in the truck, no, not cool. And what's more, we were about to set out to travel and drive a lot, towing the RV. 
The ride was rough because the truck was a workhorse that could carry a heavy load. It wasn't a luxury truck, it was a work truck. So our shop in Columbus suggested getting new rubber shackles for the rear of the truck that would soften the ride without lowering our GVWR. We had them installed and it was a game changer. No more sore lungs, super soft ride, and we still towed the RV with no issues. It did play a part, I think, in having to raise the hitch higher, but I'd do it again in a heartbeat. Game changer. And of course, as a baseline upgrade, we traded up the stock tires that came with the truck for some all-terrain heavy load E110 ply 120 load index tires that could handle rough terrain, rain and snow, and all while bearing the weight of towing our RV. So I got the Nitto Terra Grappler G2 tires and of course I faced the lightning rods out. After having just a couple of trips in the RV on well paved roads, we found that the dually really kicked up a lot of sand and road debris onto the front of the RV, despite the hefty mud flaps already on the truck. Since we knew we'd be on some rough roads and gravel roads, to protect the RV and other drivers, we decided to invest in some rock tamers. And for the short girl who felt like getting out of the truck needed a parachute, Jordan sprang for some running boards, and I'm telling ya, it's made all the difference in the world. So these are the mods that we've made to the truck already, with the exception of the solar setup we have specifically for the truck, which is next week's video. In the future, we plan to install an LED light bar to the top of the truck, both as a light bar, but also as a windbreak for solar panels that are up there. We had installed the light bar while we were in Ohio, but I just couldn't bring myself to pry off the weather stripping on the side of the windshield to run the wires down to the battery. We considered having it professionally installed, but we wanted to save our pennies for the trip. All non-essential upgrades took a back seat. Although we decided it should have been in the essential category when we almost hit a bear and a bison on the trip through Canada. We'll get that installed as soon as we figure out how to do it first without damaging the truck. If anyone knows how to install a light bar specifically on a 2017 Ram 3500, please let me know in the comments how to do it. Other future upgrades include installing the engine block heater cable the next time we remove the filter when changing the oil. Yes, we both do that ourselves and we both do that ourselves. Learn how to take care of your vehicles. Don't be afraid to get dirty. Get in there, do the job yourself. Learn to take care of your truck or your cars. You can't count on somebody else to do it right. We plan on installing some pods on the sides and maybe a spotlight or two, one for each of us. Okay, maybe that's excessive. The last thing I know we want to get for the truck is a ceiling mounted gun rack to mount a defensive weapon. We'll need them against large predators we're sure to encounter in Alaska. One of the questions I get asked most by you guys is how we're going to prepare for a long trip and the breakdown risks that come with them. What if we get stuck on the side of the road? What if we get stranded in this middle of nowhere? What if we get snowed in for days or weeks somewhere? Well, that's possible. Okay, let's talk about breakdowns. Let me show you our emergency kit. This black and red tub has just a few of the emergency items we carry in our emergency supplies. Remember, we have our house and everything we own with us, minus everything we had to get rid of, including 2,000 pounds of food that was part of our original emergency preparedness plan. But in this kit, we have just a few of the roadside basics specific to a breakdown, like reflective vests and cones. Extra car oil with new oil and fuel filters. Mylar blankets.
a fuel funnel. An 8 ton jack and corresponding jack stands that are in the back side of the truck, one of those items that we would grab through the side cap if we needed to. Extra antifreeze for the truck and about 3 gallons of minus 40 degree Fahrenheit antifreeze in another container. Diesel antifreeze, 6 6 gallon jugs for water in addition to the 57 gallons of water the RV tank carries. All of my tools two 2,000 watt generators, 100 pounds of propane total for heat, cooking, and running generators, four red five gallon containers of stabilized gasoline for running generators, a 12 volt air compressor, ropes, bungees, water hoses, water filtration suitable for emergency use, a cell booster to boost internet signal in low signal areas, a bazillion blankets, two fluffy warm dogs and a fat cat to share a two-person sleeping bag with if all else is lost. Okay, maybe we'll talk a little bit about our solar on the truck, but not too much. Only because it plays into part of our emergency preparedness where the truck is concerned. We have 500 watts of polycrystalline solar panels mounted on top of the truck. These run into this gland here which has hot and neutral MC4 connectors permanently affixed. From here, we can run cable from the truck to either the RV or to a portable power station, like say our Blue Eddy that we bring in the truck with us on trips or while traveling. This is the Blue Eddy AC200P, 2000 watt hour, 2000 watt portable power station. Without going into too much detail, let's just say that in an emergency situation, it can be solar charged to maintain power and will charge just about anything electrical that would need or want to use in an emergency situation, including a heating blanket, cell phones, and a cellular signal booster, a hot plate, or whatever. Since it recharges every time the sun comes out, as long as it's plugged into the truck's solar panels, the power availability should be steady and available in emergency situations. For the trip, we'll be using it to run our cellular booster, cellular internet router, and Jordan's work laptop so he can continue to work while I drive. It will also charge our camera equipment between uses. Our next video takes you on an RV tour. Then the following video goes over our solar setup. What we have, why we have it, how we determined what we needed, and how it's working for us so far. All of this is in preparation for our trip to Alaska and for life in Alaska. So stick around, it's gonna get really interesting. specific to a breakdown, like reflective vests and homes, mylar blankets, extra car oil with new oil and fuel filters, a fuel funnel, an 8-ton jack and corresponding jack stands that are in the back side of the truck, one of those items that we would grab through the side of the cap door if we needed to. <clears throat> extra antifreeze, extra antifreeze for the truck and about three gallons of minus 40 degree Fahrenheit RV antifreeze in another container. Diesel antifreeze, six six gallon jugs for water in addition to the 57 gallons of water the RV tank carries. All of my tools, two 2000 watt generators. Jordan! Two 2,000 watt generators, 100 pounds of propane total for heat, 100 pounds of propane total 